Are you now or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? Sir, I am 42 years of age and have never had to face a jury as defendant or grand jury as witness in my life. I have committed no crime under any of the laws of this country and am not engaged in subversion. I certainly shall not answer questions representing allegations against me made by persons not present and not identified, whom I cannot confront and whom my lawyer cannot cross-examine as to their truthfulness. Do you honestly apprehend, sir, that if you told this committee truthfully while you're under oath whether or not you are now this instant or ever have been a member of the Communist Party, you would be supplying information which might be used against you in a criminal proceeding? Honorable beaters of children and sadists uniformed and in plain clothes. Distinguished Dixiecrat wearing the clothing of a gentleman. Eminent Republican who opposes an accommodation with a one country with which we must live at peace in order for us all and our children to survive. If you think that I am going to cooperate with this collection of Judases, of men who sit there in violation of the United States Constitution, if you think I will cooperate with you in any way, you are insane. In 1947, a period of extreme tension and paranoia, known as the Cold War, gripped the nation. Fear of communism spread all across the country. The Soviet Union was considered the enemy due to their support in this belief. Through news and media outlets, the words traitor and spy were used more and more frequently. Anyone associated with the Communist Party in any way was not to be associated with. This period of fear, known as the Red Scare, ruined the lives of many individuals. It wasn't long before this wave of fear began to flood Hollywood. The film industry was heavily targeted. Rumors of subliminal communist messages written into film scripts prompted Congress to investigate. One senator who played a major role in these investigations was Joseph McCarthy. He adopted his anti-communist system of practices known as McCarthyism. Writers associated with the Communist Party would become blacklisted. So to be blacklisted was really kind of the worst thing that could happen to you. No one would work with you. You couldn't get a job. So if you had spent your whole life as a, and this impacted predominantly screenwriters, that is your passion and that is your love and that is your art form. And to be told that you cannot use this, it was really hard for some people to transition into finding another job. A group of screenwriters in Hollywood were accused of associating with the Communist Party. They became known as the Hollywood Ten. The Hollywood Ten was a group of nine screenwriters and a director-producer, and they were brought before a committee hearing in front of the Committee of Un-American Activities. And they were accused of being members of, uh, being socialists and members of the Communist Party, and that they were putting their Communist, communistic ideas into their scripts and they needed to, one, own the fact that they were doing this and two, they needed to name as many people as they could that were a part of their organization. And this group uh, pled the First Amendment and they refused to kind of answer or bend to Congress as well and so they, everyone in that group got uh, prison sentences. And what this led to was eventually a second hearing and at this hearing, many of the individuals pled the fifth so that you can't, um, you can't provide evidence against yourself in uh, court of law. And so those individuals, because they pled the fifth instead of the first, did not go to prison, but they were still incorporated into the blacklist. Even at the risk of going to prison, some of these writers would still write screenplays under different names. One of these writers was Dalton Trumbo. Congress has no right to investigate what we think or how we make movies. I'll write you a movie. And you don't want your name on it. No, you don't want my name on it. He wrote several films under different pseudonyms. One of the films he secretly wrote was Spartacus, which starred Kirk Douglas and was directed by Stanley Kubrick. 
This Academy Award-winning film came out in 1960 and helped bring an end to blacklisting. Writers were not the only ones who suffered during this time. Directors, actors, and actresses were blacklisted as well. Actress Lee Grant made statements after a eulogy for J. Edward Bomberg. She stated his early death was caused by the pressures from the House of Un-American Activities Committee. In addition, her rejection to testify against her husband, Arnold Manoff, led to her being blacklisted. She remained blacklisted for 12 years until the HUAC formally released her name. Orson Welles was written about in the publication of Red Channels. The article discussed the communist influences on TV and radio. In the article, Wells' political activity was discussed, and due to the publication, suspicions arose, and he was eventually blacklisted. The directing and acting community had a large response to fight the Hollywood 10 allegations. They formed a group called the Committee of the First Amendment. The group showed support for the Hollywood 10 and went against HUAC, which included A-list entertainers such as Humphrey Bogart, Katherine Hepburn, Judy Garland, Lucille Ball, and Groucho Marx. Eventually, McCarthyism began to take a downfall. Television broadcaster Edward Morrow began debating about McCarthy and his tactics, essentially calling him out. This opened the public's eyes to look at things in a different way and shed light on McCarthy's true color. His witch hunt was ending. I think it was a combination of events. You had Murrow coming out. You also had a growing frustration among individuals that were, I think, getting tired of the general paranoia and constantly having to check over your shoulder. That gets exhausting after a while. But uh, that helped tip the, the scales and that more people who who were afraid of being vocal, didn't agree with what was going on, felt that they now could step forward and speak against. And this did help lead to Congress eventually um, taking some action against uh, McCarthy and, and kind of the committee that he put together. But I think it was a combination. The Red Scare was definitely a trying time for this nation. Many of our basic rights as Americans were tested as we struggled to fight with communism. This fight, however, took us to a place where we were fighting ourselves. In a way, we became our own worst enemy by attacking our fellow citizens. This indeed was a tough time for Hollywood and the film industry as a whole. But it's like they say in show business, the show must go on. And it still does to this day. <laughs>